the Nubians of Kenya. The Nubian community in Kenya has lived in the country for over a hundred years yet has historically been denied recognition. After Kenya's independence, many people in the Nubian community were not extended Kenyan nationality and since then they have struggled for many social, civil and economic rights. Up until the most recent census conducted in 2009, the Nubian community was not a formally recognized tribe of Kenya. They were considered as other Kenyans or simply others. They have faced difficulties in obtaining national ID cards, passports, as well as the economic opportunities that are easily accessible to Kenyans from other tribes. In 1912, the British government designated 4,197 acres of land for the Nubians to settle on as their new homeland in Kenya. The land was located outside of what will become the city of Nairobi. The Nubians called the land Kibra or land of forest. Since Kenya's independence, the Nubian community has been denied title to this land. Over the past 40 years, hundreds of thousands of Kenyans would flood into Nairobi seeking work and Kibra was the place where they were encouraged to settle. Eventually, the Nubian village of Kibra would come to be known as Kibera, one of the largest slums in Africa. Over the years, the Nubian community has striven for recognition to contribute to a country and society it has lived in for generations. Recent developments in Kenya's laws and a new constitution over the past year have provided some hope for the Nubian community, but having been marginalized economically and politically for decades, the community still faces several challenges. The Nubians first arrived in Kenya in the early 1900s and now number about 100,000 plus. Nubians in East Africa are not a single ethnic group, but a constellation of people belonging to different tribes as a result of history their religion, Islam, and their origins in the military, they have acquired a shared identity. The vast majority of the Nubians in East Africa are descendants of Sudanese ex-servicemen in the British Army. Following a mutiny in 1897, the British resigned its decision to repatriate them and instead dispersed the community into Kenyan territory. The Nubians, who by then retained no ties with Sudan and had no claim to land in that country, could not return independently to Sudan and were therefore left with no choice but to remain in Kenya. Nubian villages became breeding grounds for soldiers for British army, although these people were forced conscripts into the Turco-Egyptian and the British armies while Sudan was under Anglo-Egyptian rule. They also contributed to the British military efforts during the First and Second World Wars. The Nubians were demobilized without proper compensation, pension or after-service benefits. Unlike the Indians who had also been relocated into the region by the British to render similar services, the Nubians were not accorded the privilege of British citizenship despite their loyal service to the British crown. When constructing Kenya's social setup, the British colonial authority consolidated ethnic groups and designated them to native reserves. They deliberately left out the Nubians who were considered a detribalized community rather than a Kenyan tribe. The British also ensured that Nubians only owned temporary structures on the land they occupied. These events and decisions are the origins of the Nubians' temporary existence. Because of this history and despite more than a century on Kenyan territory, Nubians do not belong to the social setup of Kenya.
The Kenyan government uses both ethnicity and territory to establish belonging. Since both Nubian ethnicity and their territory of occupancy are contested by the government, most Nubians live as de facto stateless persons without adequate protection under national and international law irrespective of the fact that they should be considered Kenyan citizens under the constitution. In Kenya, nothing defines your citizenship more than your ethnicity. Nubians face institutionalized discrimination in issuance of documents. They are subjected to a vetting process of ethnic determination to acquire an identity card or passports. Kenya today does not have official figures of Nubians and does not include them in census reports. There is no official recognition of the community. The Kenyan government had classified the community as other Kenyans or just others and has only recently started a process of recording Nubians as a named clan of other Kenyans. Above all, Nubians live in temporary structures throughout Kenya and often on contested lands. Most of Nubians' settlements do not have title deeds and are only occupied on a temporary occupational license, TOL, leaving the present generation of Nubians as mere squatters. Recently, a whole community of Nubians was rendered homeless in one of Kenya's capital after their houses were demolished, not sparing the mosque, schools and other social amenities. This is our land. Tumekufa hapa, mababu zetu in fact wamezikwa just across the road. One kilometer from here, makaburi zetu zikwa. Sasa sisi leo tumekua homeless. Tunaenda wabi jamani. Wewe, rais, uli hapa kulinda wa raia na kulinda katiba ya Kenya. Kulinda katiba ya Kenya ni baadha kulinda hawa 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 wa raia hawa. Sisi ndiyo wanye tulifungua hii kibosu naona. Mimi nilizaliwa kisu. Nilikuja hapa na wajomba yangu, na baba yangu, na nyanya yangu. Tulingia kibosu kama mustuni. Hakuna chochote. Ndege tu ndiyo nalia. Sisi bado wadogo wadogo. Ndege tu na mustuni. Na mtoni ya kibosu hii. Lakini maneno ni maona tareki tano siku ya juma usiku saa ine usiku ah mimi naona mimi si raia ya Kenya mimi mgeni the nubian community waliletwa na british government ambaye inafaa kwa recognize hata kata commission yote ina recognize nubian community african commission ina recognize nubian community mbona sasa hizi wanatufanyia hivi is it because we are minorities ndio tunanyanyaswa kwa haki yetu hapana katiba imetupatia haki yetu lazima tutafute haki yetu kama wakazi wa, wa, wa Kenya stateless individuals and communities like the nubians are assumed to be hopeless and helpless victims dependent upon the goodwill of others under the assumption that citizenship is the only vehicle for having a civic and political voice and that therefore stateless people lack any political identity. Stateless people become less than fully human and are reduced to mere targets of humanitarian assistance. All energies are thus focused on how to acquire citizenship for stateless people as fast as easily as possible. As a tribe of Kenya, and at landless, the Nubian story is more than anything else the story of a search for a home. And like all human stories, it is one of contradictions. It is a story of displacement and an easy settlement, of shifting and divided loyalties, and of sometimes conflicting strategies aimed at constructing themselves as citizens. Perhaps the only consistency in the Nubian story is their status as in between or outside the categories that dictate, in formal and informal terms, belonging in the communities in which they have found themselves.